In this video, we're going to introduce the HP 10B2 financial calculator, as well as walk through a couple of examples on how to use it for calculations with what I refer to as the five key approach. Before we go through the calculations, let me introduce the calculator a little bit. This is your HP 10B2 financial calculator. Up in the top row, you'll see what we refer to as the five key approach. The number of periods, interest rate, present value, payment, and future value. Most of our time value of money calculations will use those five keys. We also will occasionally use this cash flow button when we deal with uneven cash flow streams to calculate a rate of return, interest rate per year, or net present value. Now, Quick overview before we get started going through the calculations, a couple of key things. One is shift buttons. There are actually two shift buttons on the HP 10B2. One is a blue shift button, the other is orange. Notice as you look at the calculator, some of the buttons have a shift that is blue, or functions that are blue, and functions that are orange. So all the time value of money button shifts that we want are orange. So whenever I say shift, I'm always talking about this orange key here. The blue is more for some statistical functions, but for the time value of money functions, we're always referring to the orange shift whenever we say shift. So let's go ahead and turn our calculator on. When we do that, you'll see that the default setting for the calculator is two decimal places financial calculator normally people want to see dollars and cents so that's the default setting while that's convenient for a lot of calculations there are sometimes I want more than two decimal places maybe I'm calculating a percentage or doing something else and I don't want it to round off to two decimal places so the first thing I want to do with my calculator is change the number of decimals that will display to 9. That's the maximum the HP 10B2 will display. I like to set it to the max, that way I can round off what, what I feel is appropriate. If you want to, you could set it to 5 or 6 or something else if you don't want that many decimals. But again, I want to set it to the maximum, then I can choose the appropriate number to round off to. So to do that, I'm going to use this DISP for display function. Note that's a shift, it's in orange. So to change that, I'm going to do shift DISP. And now I want to tell it how many decimals I want to display. Note the screen there has two decimals on it. I'm going to press 9. And once I do that, my screen now has nine decimal places displayed on there. So now it's got the max number of decimals. Another setting that I'm going to change right now just to familiarize you with it is this periods per year sometimes we'll do calculations with annual payments and that's where we're going to start out but other times you might want to do monthly maybe you're figuring a car payment or a mortgage payment or maybe you want to figure savings for retirement and you're going to save out of every paycheck you get paid bi-weekly that's 26 periods per year so different problems are going to require different periods per year. In order to see what it's set at, if you hold down on this clear all button, you'll be able to see your periods per year. That's the orange, so we have to do the shift, press the clear all, and hold it. When you hold it, you see your calculator is showing what periods per year it's currently set for. And right now my calculator is set for two periods per year for semi-annual, we'll do that with bonds, but you might see 12 there, you might see one there, whatever it's currently set at. Now, in order to change that, you need to tell the calculator what you want it to be. So we're gonna set our default to one period per year, so just one, and then we want to enter that as our P slash YR. Again, that's a shift function, so we have to press shift, and then periods per year. Now when I go do that shift clear all, notice my on-screen display says one period per year. And that's what I want. Now 
Your periods per year will stay whatever you set it at until you change it. If you want it to be monthly and you set it to 12, it's going to stay that way until you change it back. Turning your calculator off and back on does not change the periods per year. So remember, anytime you're changing from one type of periods per year to the other, you have to set your calculator up to do that. Another setting, which we're not going to use very often in class, but sometimes comes in handy, is the begin slash end setting. And this deals with annuities. Annuities are equal periodic cash flow streams. And somewhere you might encounter annuity might be a mortgage payment or a retirement saving situation where you're saving $100 per month, every month. Note that in both of those situations, you're making the same cash flow every period over a fixed number of times. Normally, we assume cash flows come at the end of each period, but occasionally they come at the beginning of each period. The default setting on your calculator is end of period, and that's what we're going to use most often. But if you see a problem that says cash flows come at the beginning of each period, you need to change your calculator for that. And in order to change your calculator, you want to use this begin end function here. Again, it's a shift, so you're going to have to press the shift function to get there. And what that does is every time you press that, toggle it back and forth. See on the bottom of your screen now it says begin. If I press it again, shift, begin, end, that'll disappear. Shift, begin, end, and it's there. So whenever it says begin on the bottom of your screen, your calculator is set for beginning of period payments. If you see that and you don't want beginning of period payments, you've got to change it or you're going to get the wrong answer. So again, if you see begin, it's set for beginning of period. If you see nothing, it's set for end. Let's go ahead and set it for end right now. So we need to get rid of that begin by toggling shift, begin end, and now we're set for end of period payments, which is what we want. So our calculator is all set up now. One period per year, maximum number of decimals displayed, and end of period payments. So now let's go ahead and get to a problem. You deposit 7,000 into the bank today and earn a 6.5% rate of return or interest rate. Now note the terminology here, so rate of return or interest rate. Technically this would be an interest rate because it's a loan that you're making to the bank and so they're going to pay you interest. But a lot of investments such as stocks or mutual funds or commodities or precious metals don't pay interest. Instead you're hoping to earn a rate of return. It's not a promised rate of return, but it's what you're hoping to get off of your investment. And so you might see the term rate of return instead of interest, or you might see discount rate or rate of growth or some other term along those lines. We want to know how much you're going to have after 15 years. So what we're trying to find is the future value, how much we're going to have at the end of the time period. So in this problem, we're using our five key approach. N stands for the number of periods. I slash YR is going to be your interest rate. PV is your present value, what you're starting with today or what you want to find out a future cash flow stream is worth to you today. PMT is the annuity, your equal periodic cash flow. And then FV is your future value, what the money is going to grow to over time. In this problem, we're trying to solve for the future value, and we do not have a PMT. We don't have an annuity stream in this, so we're going to have to zero that out. So what we're going to put into our calculator is 15 years for N. Our interest is 6.5%. So we put that in as 6.5. Our present value is 7,000. That's what we're starting with today. We don't have an annuity stream, so we're going to zero that out. And we want to solve for our future value. So now let's go to our financial calculator and show you exactly how to enter that. One thing you might want to do when you start a problem is just clear all to make sure everything's cleared out. But you don't need to do that as long as you enter all five keys. If you do want to, just shift, 
clear all and that'll clear everything out but again as long as we enter the four keys and then solve for the fifth one that we want we're good so we're going to start with n and the way to do that is make sure you put the number and then put it into n don't press n 15 that won't work you've got to press 15 n so we're going to press 15 go to the n key put that in Next, we want our interest rate, 6.5%. So 6.5, I slash YR, press that. 7,000 for present value, 7,000, PV. Zero out our annuity stream. And now we want to solve for future value. With the HP 10B2, when you want to solve for one of the five keys, after you've put in the other four, you just press the one you want to solve for. So all we have to do is press that FV, and we get $18,002.89. So that's our future value. Now, note on here, that actually comes out as negative 18000 And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we move through this series of examples. But let me go ahead and introduce the idea there. What the calculator is always doing is trying to balance things out. You told the calculator, because you entered this as positive, that you were getting 7,000. We actually did this problem not from your perspective, but from the perspective of the bank. The bank received the 7,000 today, so it had to pay back $18,002.89 after 15 years to the person that made the deposit. If you wanted to be the person that made the deposit, you could enter that as negative 7,000, you gave up the 7000 today, and then your calculator would have given you a positive 18000 here in the future. Now, the reason I didn't worry about it in this problem is because as long as we know who we are, we can decide whether or not to include the negative value in our answer. And since we were looking at it from our perspective, we didn't include the negative value. We were going to get 18000 However, there are three important keys to look at for weather signs matter. PV, PMT, and FV. Those all represent cash flows. And if you enter two or more non-zero values for your cash flows, then you have to be careful about the cash flow sign. Here, we entered two values for our cash flows and solved for the third. But one of the values that we entered was a zero. So we only had one non-zero value. The sign is not going to impact our answer. We can just ignore the sign when we get our solution. A little bit later on, we'll see some examples where the sign is critical, and we do have to watch out for that. So now let's go to another example. This time, we're saving for retirement. And now we're going to introduce the annuity stream. You're saving for retirement, and you want to save $4,000 per year at the end of each year. Now, the key sign that you need an annuity stream here is that per year. Anytime you see the words per year or every year or each month or every week or something like that that indicates you're making the same cash flow payment or you're receiving the same cash flow payment every period for a fixed number of periods, you're dealing with an annuity stream. So 4000 per year tells us we're dealing with an annuity we're going to have a PMT value this time around. 25 year time horizon, 8% return. How much are we going to have after 25 years? And now here we're asking for the future value because we want to know how much we're going to have at the end of the 25 years. Not what is it worth today, but how much are we going to have at the end of the 25 years? So again, our five keys are the N, the I slash YR, the PV, PMT, and the FV, which we're going to solve for. Now our N, we said, was 25 years, so 25 periods. Our interest rate is the 8%. Our present value no, we don't have any present value. There's nothing that says you already have X dollars saved today. So we're going to zero that out. 
our only cash flows are the 4000 per year that we're going to be saving at the end of each year for the next 25 years. So that's our annuity stream of $4,000 and we're going to solve for the future value. Go to our financial calculator. Go ahead and hit clear cancel a couple times to clear out your screen. And now we want to put in the values. 25N Our I slash YR is 8. Our present value is 0. Our payment is 4,000. And now we want to compute the future values. So just press the FV button. And after 25 years, we're going to have 292,000. $423.76. And we can ignore the negative sign because we only have one non-zero value that we're putting in. Now let's modify this problem a little bit so that instead of starting with nothing, we start the 25-year savings period with $50,000 already saved. So we're using the same setup. We're trying to save for 25 years we're going to save $4,000 per year at the end of each year. We're still going to earn an 8% return, but now we've already got the $50,000 saved. So our five key approach is going to have 25 as our N. Our interest rate is still the 8%. But now we have a present value, the 50,000 already saved. So 50,000 is our present value and our payment is 4,000 and we're still solving for the future value. Now remember before when I said we started talking about the negative values, I said if we have two or more non-zero values for our three cash flow related buttons, we have to be careful about the sign. Well, we're there now. We have 50000 for a present value, 4000 for a payment. So we've got two non-zero inputs that we're putting into our calculator. Now, if we're not correct in how we put our signs, we can get the wrong answer. In this particular problem, it's okay if they're both positive. It's okay if they're both negative, but you can't have one positive and one negative or you're going to get the wrong answer because both of these cash flows are going in the same direction. Now I'm going to try to make this one the correct way from the perspective of us as the investor. So we saved $50,000 already up front, which means we gave up that $50,000. We set it aside put it into the bank so that we can get money back in the future. In addition, we're giving up that $4,000 every year in order to get money back in the future. So these are both going to be cash outflows. They're negative so that we can get back a positive cash inflow at the end. Now when you enter cash flows as a negative, you have to be careful. Use your plus minus key on your calculator, not your subtract. So Let's walk through that on our calculator. Again, let's go ahead and start by putting in our 25N and our 8 interest rate. And now we're going to get to our present value. Now, to do that, let's go ahead and put in the 50,000. But before we press the present value, now we need to make it negative. And to do that, you want to use the plus minus key on your calculator. Up here you can see plus minus. Don't use the subtract key. That won't work. It's got to be the plus minus key in order to switch that to negative. So once you've put in the 50,000, press the plus minus, and you can see that changes your value to negative 50,000. So now we can put that in as the present value. Same thing for the payment. 4,000 plus minus, make it negative. I'll put that in for the payment. So now we've got our 25N, 8 interest, 
negative 50,000 present value, negative 4,000 payment. All we have to do is solve for our future value. Notice that comes out positive now, $634,847.52. So having that extra $50,000 saved already made quite a bit of difference in how much we're going to have available to us at the end of the 25 years. Our next problem, we're going to solve for something other than future value. The examples we've done up till now, we've solved for future value. Now we're going to solve for the interest rate. So what we're asking here is what interest rate are we earning? We're offered 17,408 years in exchange for $9,500 today. So we're effectively lending or giving up $9,500 today so we can get back 17,400 eight years from now. We want to figure out what rate of return or what interest rate we're earning on that loan or investment that we're making. Again, five key approach. And I slash YR, PV, PMT, FV. But now, instead of solving for the future value like we were before, now we're going to be solving for this interest rate. So our N is the eight years. So we set eight N. Our present value is the 9,500. that we're giving up today. No, we're giving that up today, so it's got to be negative. And then we're going to get back 17,400 eight years from now. We're getting that back eight years from now, so that's our future value. We don't have an annuity stream here, so we're going to zero out our PMT. There is no annuity. Clear that out of our calculator. Instead, put in the values we know solve for what we're trying to find. So let's go to our calculator and we want to start with uh, 8n 8n, put that in. We're skipping over the interest rate now because that's what we're going to solve for so we're going to move on to the present value. Present value is negative, we were giving that up so 9500 Hit that plus minus key to make it negative. Present value. We don't have an annuity stream, so we zero that out. Just zero PMT. And lastly is our 17,400 future value that we're getting back at the end of the eight years. Once we've got those all set up, we can solve for our interest rate. And again, just press the button you're trying to solve. Interest rate on this loan or investment is 7.86%. So that's going to be our rate of return. We're investing $9,500 today. We're going to earn an average annual rate of return of 7.86% over the next eight years. Now let me just show you what happens if you're not careful with the signs and you entered those without making one of them negative. So just real quick. 8 is our N. We're solving for the interest rate. We make the 9,500 present value positive. We make the 17,400 future value that we're going to receive later positive. Zero out our payment. Solve for our interest. That gives us no solution. Calculator is telling us there's no interest rate out there where you can get 9,500 today and get 17,400 eight years from now without giving up any cash flows. So the only way to get 17,400 eight years from now is to give something up today or to give up an annuity. So you have to have a negative value and a positive value whenever you're solving for the interest rate. Now in our last example, we're gonna go back to where I was talking about periods per year and we're going to recognize that not all problems are done on an annual basis. So now we're looking at a car loan. You're going to purchase a new car that's going to cost $25,000. You have $5,000 available for a down payment. You're 
you're going to be borrowing the remainder at 3.9% over five years. And we want to know the monthly payment is going to be. It's the key word there when you see monthly. You've got to set your calculator to 12 periods per year. So one of the things you need to recognize is now your calculator has to be set for 12 periods per year. Also, N doesn't stand for number of years, but it stands for the number of periods. So five years at 12 periods per year gives us 60 months. In order to work with non-annual compounding periods, we have to do both. Change your periods per year and make sure you're entering the number of periods, not the number of years. Then go to your five key approach. We're solving for our monthly payment, so we're solving for that annuity. And now we have to figure out what the rest of the values are. As we said, our N was 60, 60 monthly time periods. Our interest rate is the 3.9% that we're borrowing money at. Now our present value is something that's a little bit tricky because a lot of people will see that 5,000 for a down payment and say, well, I'm making a down payment today, so that must be my present value. But whenever you're dealing with a loan, regardless of whether it's a car loan, a mortgage loan, or any other type of loan, the present value is the amount you're borrowing. And in this case, your car is going to cost $25,000. And from that $25,000, you've got 5,000 of it already covered from your down payment. So the difference between those is 20,000. That's how much you're gonna to borrow today. That's how much you have to pay back. So the present value is the difference between the purchase price and your down payment, how much you're borrowing to start this loan. Now that we've got that, our future value. Future value is zero because we don't owe anything after our last payment. So now we just plug those into the calculator. Now remember, the first thing we had to do was change our periods per year to 12. We need 12 periods per year. So to do that, press 12, shift, periods per year. So shift, periods per year. Now our calculator is set for 12 periods per year. If you do the shift, clear all, you'll see that. So now we put in our sequence 60 n 3.9 interest per year 20,000 that we're borrowing we're receiving that money today so we can go buy the car with it so that's positive 20,000 zero out our future value solve for our payment just press that PMT button and it's going to require us to make monthly payments of $367.43. Notice that comes out as negative because we received the $20,000 today from the bank. So we have to pay the bank back $367. Positive cash inflow today. Cash outflow, which is negative, for our monthly payment. That should introduce you to your Texas, I mean to your HP 10B2 financial calculator and help you get started on five key approaches. Hope this video has been helpful.